everyone, it's Jen. And Maria. And welcome to Amateur Kitchen, where we bring you into our kitchen and show you that you don't need to be a professional chef to cook or think like one. And today we are making Rusky Burgers. That's right. And as you can probably see, we have a very special guest with us again, my husband Chris. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to be here, guys. He's been on here once before. I'm sure if you guys seen the Father's Day special with my dad as well, he's practically a veteran. I mean, <laughs> he really could cook for like a five-star restaurant now, right, Maria? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, we're glad to have you on. And as Maria said, today we are making some Rotsky burgers. You say a what? A what burger? Yes, Rotsky burgers. It actually is a very traditional thing in my family on the Lucan side. As I've told you all before, we had Sunday dinners every single Sunday, and occasionally my grandpa would make these Rosky burgers. It actually came from a guy named Gaylord Rosky, and he had a saloon and bar in our hometown, Watertown, South Dakota, and he would cook these burgers, and unfortunately, the restaurant hasn't uh, been there for a while, but the recipe definitely lives on. And the cool thing is this Gaylord Rosky, if you're a boxing fan at all, he used to spar with Joe Lewis way back in the day. So, anyways, kind of a little bit of fact for you guys. So, let's go ahead and get started making these Rosky burgers. Awesome. All right, should we get started, Maria? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, to get started, we want to choose some, some beef with a lot of flavor. So, we're going to go with 80-20 ground beef. And I encourage you guys to stick with 80-20 because, again, that's where a lot of the flavor comes from. So, we will throw this in the bowl. And Maria, do you want to season it up with some salt and pepper? Mm -hmm. Oh, a little more than that. A little bit more, honey. There we go. We may have some more later. All right. How about some pepper? It's just a very basic seasoning. And while they're doing that, I'm just thinly slicing two sweet onions here. Okay, that should be a good stir, honey. And what you're going to do is all just right. mix it all together, just right? Mix it all together. Absolutely. Can I do it with you? Actually, let's, I'll start with it, then when we throw in the other ingredients, I'll let you uh, blend it together with your hands. Well, actually, we're going to throw these on top. So we'll okay. keep doing this. Now remember, because Chris is ready to cook for a five-star restaurant, he already <laughs> knows that you don't want to work your meat too much, otherwise it can end up being a little bit tough. So That's right. So season it and mix it and then just be done with it. Right, so should be good. what we're gonna do now while they're doing that and I'm finishing chopping is I want you guys to form about three balls out of here. A one pound will serve about two to three people. So if you guys just wanna put them together in a ball and then put them over in the pan, that would be awesome. Perfect, let's okay. get going, Maria. Mm -hmm. I'll spread this up evenly. So Jennifer finished chopping our onions. Marie and I have uh, taken the, the ground beef and created three large meatball style balls of hamburger in the pan. And now what I'm going to have Maria do is take the onions that Jennifer cut up, uh, place them on top of the hamburger, and then Jen is going to to finally grate some Actually, garlic. Actually, I'm going to have you grate some okay, garlic. Okay, I'm going to grate some garlic. So go ahead and okay. just take it. Just watch your fingers when you do it, though. Gotta be careful. I know. Go ahead. All right. Sure. And we're just going to use two cloves of garlic. That's it. And after Chris gets done with that, I'm just going to take some water and fill it halfway to the top of the meatballs. As you can tell, it's, it's going to be kind of like the juice and everything is going to cook it. After we're done with this, we're going to head over to the stove. We're going to put it on a medium to medium high heat. It's just going to kind of simmer. You don't have to put a lid on it and just cook it to your desired doneness of a meatball. So, that's a rusky burger. Almost done. That's good, you won't use it all. Nope. Nope. Okay, there we go. Here's another one. One more to go. Five star restaurant, I'm telling you guys. Not so much. Okay. Hold on, let's pour some of this in. minutes or so, but they're honestly 
really ready in about 20, just until your onions are nice and soft and your hamburger is cooked through. Now the key with Rasky Burgers is just taking it and putting it onto a bun. And my grandpa says, what makes a Rasky Burger a Rasky Burger is all of the juices. Mm -hmm. So take another spoonful of all these onions and the juices and put it on there as well. So, Maria, what do you want Dad to do after I do this? Maria and I will uh, spread some on both of these buns. Really, uh, it's up to you guys in terms of what condiment you decide to use. Traditionally with a Rosky burger, you're just going to simply use horseradish. Uh, we've decided to use horseradish mustard, which I absolutely love. You can use mayonnaise, you can use regular mustard, you can use ketchup. It's really up to you guys. Sounds good. And we're putting it on a pretzel roll today too. Right. Which traditionally we use a hamburger, but my grandpa might be like, a oh, pretzel roll, Jenny, what are you doing? Um, but I, I kind of like the pretzel rolls, so I thought I would change it up just a little bit by doing that. And he also, we have to eat it with a knife and fork, so I'm going to give Chris, Marie and I are going to share ours, because I don't know if you've noticed, all of our Amateur Kitchen fans out there, but we don't cook much with hamburger. And that's because I am not a huge fan of it. So I'm going out on a limb. I'm going to be on Maria's side today with taking a test, taste test, even though I'm not sure what I'm even going to say. So I'm going to take a taste test too because I do not like any. Nice. And the good thing with cooking it in all this juice is it's not going to dry out because it's really absorbing all of that onion juice while it's cooking. So hold on, Maria. I'll get you a bite. There you go. There's a good bite. There you go. Try that. What do you think of the juice, Chris? Mm. I love it. Is the it? The bun absolutely absorbed the juice and it adds so much flavor to the uh, the bite, the burger. It's, it's good. I love it. I'm going to eat this whole thing. Mm. I don't know if I'm that ambitious, but Okay, I can tell you the horseradish mustard though definitely helps out a lot for me personally. So, what do you think, Maria? Not so much. I got a bite along with this. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. This is what I love about whenever my grandparents give me recipe ideas and what I remember us eating on Sunday dinners is they come from a very humbling background and a lot of it very took very little ingredients. I mean this really consists of only four ingredients, pretty inexpensive. I always know they make macaroni and milk and stuff like that and sometimes just keeping it simple makes it the best. So thank you Grandpa and Grandma for that, right? We miss our Sunday dinners, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes we do. Alright, well remember Head to AmateurKitchen.tv to find more recipes and videos. This is what we're having for our next meal. We hope you are too. And join us again next time on Amateur Kitchen. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah.